Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today I want to give you guys my final version of the Rage Vortex of Berserking Mana Stacking Scion. Um, quick storytelling, how do we get here? Um, basically the other day uh, one of my viewers on Twitch sent me a PUB and said like, yo MBX, check this out, uh, this might be a build for you, right? So I, I saw this one and said like, okay, uh, Mana Storm, Mind of the Council, Melee, um, Mana Stacking more or less, because the Mind of the Council gives you added lightning damage. The new updated Mana Storm Shield that now drops, I think, from Uber Bosses, which got pretty insanely buffed, as you see here, equal to 25% of your sacrificed mana, and the current version has 50%, so it basically got doubled in the damage. But there was one thing that really caught my eye, and this is the Lethal Pride in this combination, which gives you access to uh, the Chain Breaker Keystone. This is something, um, yeah, nobody ever uses anymore because it got changed multiple times over the past leaks and now uh, it is kind of like trash because the problem is um, it still works the same as it used to so you don't have mana region anymore but you can stack mana region to gain rage region instead, right? But the problem is skills cost plus three rage and this is a base cost that scales with your links, that means... As an example, a 1 link um, arc will cost you 10 mana, a 6 link arc will cost you 25 mana or something, right? So there is this mana multipliers that every support gem adds. The problem is it also adds to Chainbreaker. As an example here, I have Ancestral War Chief or Ancestral Protector in a 4 link, right? Um, and this has cost 12 rage. And my Rage Vortex, 11 rage, my... Frost blink even three rage because it is a one link. So the more links you add, the more rage you have. And if you play this as an an actual like I don't know cyclone build or something, you will trigger so much rage um, that you just cannot sustain anything anymore. And that's why the chainbreaker keystone is kind of like forgotten, just the way it works right now. There has been ways to get around that with reduced cost of skills. Um, but that got completely nerfed and now it usually all the note says um, says in, um, reduced mana cost of skills for example right um, just to fix that because there were people um, that got like 100% reduced cost and had no rage cost no mana cost no anything right and GDG didn't like that so they nerfed that as well right but in this specific case in this build we are using the rage vortex of berserking which is kind of like um yeah, I mean, Rage Vortex, you know, you shoot out these massive projectiles, the circular things, and they just, yeah, annihilate pretty much everything. The Rage Vortex Berserking is basically different because it circulates around your character and is played like a Blade Vortex character, right? So, um, this skill also spends Rage per second, um, the longer it is up, basically, but with our insane rage generation we can keep this up for like a minute or, or two minutes even if you wouldn't run berserk and we also run berserk that means that we have like two sources that deplete our rage all the time so now i cannot get this like off right yeah it's like uh we're gonna listen to the sound here i guess i mean if i just put in everything we could probably deplete it a bit faster um or we just enter a map and it's gone that's actually even a better case um so the thing here is quickly wait uh, our automations i currently have 42 rage regen per second and this is a lot and i could go even up to like 60 rage per second if i would play something like an Aetherius foible and stuff like that so how do we get there basically we're stacking all forms of regen a clock of defiance has, uh, gives you one percent base mana regen then we have mana regen t1 on the amulet on our rings we also have like a lot of mana region on a good roll, mana storm shield, and in the end of the day, we're getting so much mana region based on our uh, total mana that we're gonna get up to like 40, 50 rage per second, so we can sustain all these kind of things insanely long. And the thing is, as an example, like back in the days when people played the old um, the KM Spirit Gloves, where it was like uh, one rage per 100 life region, you know, they got like maybe to 10 rage per second. This is like 40 rage per second, can go even higher. So this is like the craziest thing. And the good thing here with the chain breaker, we are not spamming our skills. We just activate it once and it will, we only pay the cost once, once activating and that's about it, right? But yeah, back to the topic. Um, as I saw this build, it looked like very, very interesting. So I loaded it up on YouTube and I found this video here and I was like, bro, this looks insane. You know, it is fast. It is insane AOE. Um, and basically a build that I think I would really enjoy. So thanks for uh, the, the recommendation here. So I, I did what I do best. I just 
played the campaign again because I'm a campaign enjoyer and leveled up the um, this character. And initially I wasn't too happy with the build just because it felt squishy. I mean, there are kind of like tank in his layers. We do have Berserk. Berserk gives you less damage taken. We have um, like 20 fortification stacks um, thanks to the... Um, what is it? Champion Sub Ascendancy, which is like 20% less damage taken from hits. Um, but the build didn't have anything else besides like Arcane Cloak. You know, there is no max resistance, there is no determination, no grace, no nothing that makes the build somewhat tanky. So I kind of started to optimize the build for my uh, personal enjoyment. I added 100% spell suppression, I added the um, Celestial Brace, now I have 30 fortification stacks, and if everything is up and running, um, the build is actually quite tanky. I'm not saying it is a, a build that uh, can face tank all the content in the game and, and Shaper Slams and whatnot, this definitely not, but for... A speed mapping build, this actually um, turned out to be a lot better than yeah, I initially um, thought it's going to be, right? But as I said, um, I wasn't too happy on the first day when I played it. I loaded it up and I was like, man, I don't know, man. And then I played it a second day, a third day. And the more I played it, the more I enjoyed it. So I said, like, you know what? I'm going to min-max this um, and see where we, we end up being, right? And to be fair... I have never, like this one here in the PUB, I have here an Awakened Multi-Strike because it is currently the best damage uh, support gem. Instead of Ink AoE, you could also run something like um, Increased Critical Damage or something, right? Because the Multi-Strike is very expensive. But this is the setup that I'm running here all the time with Ink AoE and I still have like 30 mil DPS. But with Multi-Strike, it's, it's like another 10 mil because Ink AoE for bossing doesn't do a lot. And I have done all the invitations and I'm currently farming, um, what do you say, um... Challenges with this build, I'm currently doing a hundred um, Shaper Guardians and stuff like that, and I would say we're just gonna load up one of these maps to show you an actual map showcase. Um, the video that I uploaded like two days ago um, has like a T16 map, a T17 map, and all the invitations uh, with like 70% quant or something. If you wanna see more gameplay of this build. And yeah, so basically, Map starts and all you do is basically activate your um, Rage Vortex of Berserking and this thing lasts for quite a while. And since we are not having any form of mana regen anymore, because this is now Rage Regen, we are sustaining all of our mana basically with um, Mana Leech. Another thing here is we are using Frost Blink to proc our um, Mana Storm Shield. And there is a lot of ways to like improve the build even further. I mean... I personally, I'm a lazy person, I don't want to press too many buttons, um, but what you could do is, since Rage Vortex is snapshotting, you could use something like uh, Face Run, you could use something like, I don't know, Ambush for example. Ambush is a skill that I personally never used, but it gives you a shit ton of like a critical strike chance and multiplier. Uh, for a buff that exerts your attacks, right? And since um, you can exert the attacks of your uh, Rage Vortex, you basically load this thing up and then you start the Rage Vortex and it will last the entire duration, not only like the, the two or three seconds, right? So boss over here, we just quickly go in, uh, press our uh, Frost Blink to trigger our, um, what is it, Mana Storm Shield. And you, as you saw, still on the mapping showcase um, or a mapping gear, the damage is really, really good. It's not like insane, it's not like a billion DPS, but uh, it gets the job done uh, quite nicely. And I just love to just prepare a bunch of maps, throw it in, activate my Rage Vortex and just run around and just kill everything on very, very low effort um, playstyle, basically. It feels like an auto bomber to me. So let me deactivate those things again. Uh, okay, we talked about the chain breaker and how we get all the rage and how we do we sustain the rage, right? So where do we get our damage from? In one hand, we have Mind of the Council, which is basically your melee archmage kind of like style because it gives at attacks have added lightning damage equal to 6% of your mana. But the big damage comes from the mana storm shield. This got revamped. Um, and buff now, I think it's an uber drop now, but it, it says when you cast a spell, you sacrifice all mana to gain added maximum lightning damage equal to 50% of sacrificed mana for 4 seconds. This means every time you cast a spell, you're depleting all your mana, but you get all the flat damage for 4 seconds. And since we are an attack based build, we have access to leech here with the essence sap and instant leech. So in a mapping scenario or even as a single target, as long as you're like hitting something, you're gonna leech back all your mana and when it's full you basically just uh, frost blink once or use any other spell and it depletes all your mana and you gain a shit ton of added lightning damage. So does the arcane cloak when it procs, um, it spends 65% of the current mana and then basically grants your lightning damage equal to 15% of the mana spent uh, by this skill's effect. 
So you can scale, um, so there's like basically three sources of flat damage that we get and that means we don't need a crazy weapon. So what we opted in here is the Paradoxical Sword because it has double damage and a lot of penetration and attack speed and stuff like that. I got a pretty good a good corruption here with a frenzy charge after spending mana. This is not really needed because there is just a very few points here on the mark of the prey and then you get the mark mastery um, for the frenzy charge generation when you hit a marked enemy. And since we are having a lot of hits with this um, skill, we are currently hitting like 20 attacks per sec or 20 times per second. All these like frenzy charge generation or power charge generation with assassin's mark and whatnot uh, is pretty pretty um pretty much a no-brainer right i'm pretty sure they also give it to, uh, to you on kill so this is just something i got here um so i i don't have to use the mark mastery but if you don't have this corruption which you probably don't have because i don't think that these are like any any common thing you know there's here on the market and i don't even check any other stats um this is the way you would do it with mark uh the prey Good, uh, what else do we have here? There's a very sweet uh, combination here with double transcendent flash with the overlapping lethal pride and a supreme, uh, like, um, what is it called? Um, impossible escape here on uh, this note over here. I think it's uh, necromantic ages or something. Let me quickly check. Um, yeah, Necromantic Ages. And this basically uh, lets us get all the like small little notes here um, to gain extra benefits. One question that a lot of people might have do you need a mage blood on this build? And the answer is, I think so. I mean, the thing is, this build is very hard to min-max when it comes to resistance and attributes. Let me tell you that. I even got it to a point now with like, um, I have here a facing flask with LRS and I used to play this with a bismuth flask, right? So, um, basically, I was using a bismuth flask with all rest to get my resistance going, right? And after min-maxing, I could drop the bismuth flask, but I still cannot get around the suffix for all rest. Uh, and I'm still like barely rest kept. Since we're using so many uniques, you know, uh, the Celestial Brace doesn't have anything. The Mind of the Council doesn't have any resistance. This uh, the Mana Storm Shield doesn't have any. Um, the Ring could have some resistance. I have here a bit of Chaos Rest. So we actually have like uh, some form of Chaos Rest over here because something like um, poison or something was very hard on the build. But you don't really have a lot of options here. I think my boots are the only thing where I say like, hey, I need life, resistance, mana, movement speed uh, to get around. I think I paid like three divines or something for this pair. Um, but you know, with the grave crafting, it, it is actually quite uh, easy to get something like very high resistance one. But other than that, as I said, you are very resistance starved. And that's why I said, you know, mage blood makes totally sense. You can get around it when you have like a belt with um, strength, dexterity and resistance and stuff like that. Because this build also needs quite a bit of strength and being a ranger um, or basically being a scion here, uh, specking on the ranger tree, you don't really have access to a lot of strength. So you can take something like prowess or something, but... Why would you spend uh, three extra points just to get some extra strength and we're not passing to the bottom side too, right? So getting strength is not really that easy, but the Lethal Pride also has like resistance um, as well as I think strength notes uh, here and there, um, if I can find one. Um, so I actually looked for a Thomas Jewel that actually gives me resistance just because it was so hard uh, to cap resistance. And that's why I say... I don't know if you want to play this without mage, but just because of the quality of life of getting your rest kept quite uh, easily. Obviously, with the Oriot's end up, uh, I would be over rest kept, but I'm never counting in a uh, unique flask to be permanently uh, up uh, at all times, right? Then I have a diamond flask, um, quartz flask just for facing an extra spell suppression. Then obviously silver and quicksilver for the extra speed and here with the chance to avoid being shocked. Um, as well as a storm shroud jewel, we are getting ailment uh, immune basically. So, what else there is to talk about uh, on this build? We talked about the Celestial Brace, which is a new base uh, type of arm, uh, like uh, gloves that gives you 10 fortification as well as attack speed per fortification and melee hits from strike skills fortified. Don't get fooled, Rage Vortex is not a strike skill, so this line just doesn't work, okay? You need um, to have the champion sub ascendancy here um, to make uh, your um, melee hits basically fortify you, right? But with 30 fortification stacks, and there is even, I think, plus one fortification stack somewhere on uh, Thomas Jewel, like over here, that you can put in, because fortifi uh, like fortifying gives you less damage taken per stack and now even uh, attack speed. So this is, like, quite nice to have. Um, other than that, here I got a ring with just maximum mana and then spent with uh, multiplier essences, tried to hit like mana regen, and then I think I locked the suffix and reforged life to get a nicer life roll. Same thing here on the amulet. 
Um, and uh, basically, a series foil would be super budget and gives you even better rage sustain. But I think an amulet like this has like more uh, damage output when it comes to that, uh, or at least in the in the end game, basically. Um, what else there is to say? Automation on rage uh, on uh, berserk and arcane cloak. As I said, the skill snapshot, so you can take something like ambush. But I I feel like just thinking about using ambush uh, gives it. Feels like kind of bad. I mean, it gives you a shit ton of base crit and multiplier, so for the budget version, uh, is definitely good. So you would ambush something, and then you would start your Rage Vortex with Mana Storm and everything to snapshot everything, and then you are good to go uh, for the rest of the map, basically, and have, like, quite of insane damage. Good. Other than that, um, I have your one Dorianis lesson. The question, though, is um, what you can do... Instead, is instead of like a Dorianis lesson, you could just take these two notes here with Clever Chi for attack damage, leech, just life and mana with an instant leech. But since I had a Dorianis lesson laying around, I opted in here for the Essence Step, which gives you like a lot more leech per second for mana. I don't really care about the life leech uh, too much. And over here, we have like Prismatic Heart, uh, just to get even more resistance, right? Because in the end of the day, it's very rough to get uh, this going. And then we have Forbidden Flame Flash for Berserk. Um, this basically gives us stun immunity, more damage, and also another source uh, of rage generation, as well as, uh, yeah, Leech, you know, if you've killed recently, but I never care about if you've killed recently, just because uh, in a bossing scenario, you don't kill stuff, so you're not going to have this one active. Then for Tattoos, uh, opted in some extra resistance to get me res kept, as I said. That's why I say, like, Mage Blood is kind of like a good thing, and even with Mage Blood, uh, it was quite tricky to actually get res capped. Then we have a bit of um, spell suppression, uh, spell suppression tattoos to get me um, the spell suppression capped here as well. And 100%, if I can find it, probably should look at the defense part. Uh, spell suppression chance 100%. Uh, then we have like impossible escape. Sublime Vision is another uh, very interesting thing. Um, so this one would probably bump up the price. I have no idea how much they are going for right now. Let's see. Precision. 30 Divines. I think, do you need that? I mean, it gives you more critical strike chance against, uh, like, more critical strike chance, which is a lot of crit. And without that, I think it's uh, pretty much... Um, let me quickly see how much are we losing with that. Supreme Vision... Yeah, dropping like 20% crit, and my version is already, um, has a corruption here with base crit, so you don't even want to have um, a critical strike chance, you want to actually go for attack speed, but I got this version with higher base crit, so uh, I'm fine without that, but as I said, you need a lot of accuracy, you need a lot of crit, and the Supreme Vision version here uh, is quite nice to have, and I would definitely say uh, it should be uh, on the build, so how much would you realistically spend on a build? I think in my version, probably 200 Divines into the build, but it's it's always like hard to say any specific price because certain items just don't exist on the market anymore. Uh, when I bought the items, they were cheaper um, as when um, I made the build kind of like popular, at least uh, when I was streaming it and showcasing it. So the prices definitely went up. There was a point where the, the cheapest to play Vision was 200 Divines, so I'm happy that it dropped down to 30 Divines. I think I bought mine for 20 Divines. Lethal Pride. Uh, what I was looking for is actually resistance, strength, maybe intimidate, and um, yeah, multiplier. The thing though is, you get intimidate uh, against full life targets um, from the champion ascendancy, but the thing is, enemies, um, what do you say, your hits permanently intimidate enemies that are on full life, but what if, for example, my... Um, my explosion from the Oriad's end is actually hitting something and it doesn't kill it, then it's not on full life anymore, so I cannot intimidate it and blah blah blah, and intimidate adds like attack damage, so I opted in uh, for one note with a 10% chance to intimidate enemies for 4 seconds on hit, just to have it 100% uh, perfectly uptime, right? And as I said, with 20 hits per second, you know, uh, you apply this shit uh, quite quite fast. Good. I don't really know what else to explain uh, about the build. We talked about Mana Storm, we talked about Mind of the Council, um, the base mana region, the fortification stacks, the flask setup, the tattoos. You know, the PUB is in the description below if you want to further investigate this build and maybe um, get your own tweaks on it. I have to say I had a lot of fun playing this build and the longer I played it, the more I enjoyed it. And I'm currently farming, as I said, my speed mapping uh, to farm challenges uh, before we move on to the next build. And I think I have to do heist today as well. But we're going to see. But definitely a build that I can recommend. It is a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure to play. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And see you on the next video.